Okay, so whatever happened to Starlord's grandfather? So to recap, the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie opens with the death of Peter Quill's mother, Meredith Quill. And at the end of the scene, Peter's grandfather asks Peter to stay outside the world. Peter instead gets emotional, ran off to the middle of nowhere, and gets abducted by the Ravagers. So whatever happened to him? And why didn't Peter ever visit him? This is something that have been bothering me for quite some time now. And after watching the holiday special, it bothers me even more. So they did briefly explain the reason why Peter wouldn't want to go back to Earth in the second movie. Why are you trying to take this away from me? I'm not trying. He's my father. He's blood. Well, you have blood on Earth. You never wanted to return Again, there. Again, you made me come here. And Earth, Earth is the place where my mother died in front of me. But did he just forgot that he still have a grandfather? He should have at least find him to tell him that he's doing well. Imagine your daughter dying of cancer and then her son, which you yourself told to stay outside the world, gone missing and never to be found ever. Like, he must have been living his entire remaining life in guilt. And yes, he is still alive. We know this because he appeared in the second movie. In the scene where Ego's blue seed starts to take over planets across the universe, we see this man. Yes, that's him. Played by the same actor, Greg Henry. And he is probably still living with guilt and regrets. In Endgame, Doctor Strange brought the Guardians to Earth to battle Thanos. And after all is done, why couldn't Quill visit his grandfather for a bit? And you can even visit your mother's grave while you at it. Okay, but let's give it a pass. Endgame have a lot of characters and they couldn't put everything into this already overstuffed movie. But later on, it doesn't seem like it's even a big deal that Quill went back to Earth. Thor Love and Thunder just completely skips over it and so does this holiday special which specifically deals with Christmas and Earth holiday. So let's talk about the holiday special shall we? In the holiday special, Mantis and Rats go back to Earth to give Peter the best present for Christmas after hearing the story about how Yondu ruined Christmas for Peter. And after a bunch of goofy antics, they finally manage to give Peter the best Christmas present they could think of. Kevin Bacon. Peter is understandably not happy with this because they kidnapped a human without consent. Afterwards, Kevin felt bad for them. So he sings what Christmas is all about. And then we see a wholesome montage of all the Gordons receiving presents from one another. Later on, Peter asks Mantis the reason they go through all this trouble for him. And Mantis explains the story Craglin told, which Peter corrects. And then Mantis reveals her secret. Your father, Peter. Ego? He is my father too. Mantis, that's the greatest Christmas gift I could ever get. <laughs> this special should have ended with Quill bringing the Guardians to celebrate Christmas together with his grandfather, introducing his new families to his old one. There's also evidence that implies the Guardians went to Earth a couple more times in the special because it's only after Kevin saying that they understand what Christmas is all about. So only after that can each of the Guardians get presents for each other. And most of them happens to be items from Earth. Mantis got dressed a little funny, man. from earlier. Peter gave Groot an old Game Boy and Nebula somehow managed to get Rocket back his arm. And even then, Peter couldn't just stop to greet his family. It's just weird for a series which is so centered around the team of family to just completely abandon this character, who is the last relative blood of Peter. And sadly, it seems like he's going to be forgotten. If you search for Starlord or Peter Quill's grandfather on YouTube, you'll find various videos discussing an unrelated theory about Captain America being Starlord's grandfather. And based from the trailer from the third movie, it seems like they're going to explore Rocket's backstory and introduce a new character in Adam Warlock. So it's very unlikely that my boy will ever get a proper send-off or resolution. Oh yeah, I haven't even said his name once in this video. What is this name? Okay, let's find out. Oh, it's just Quill. He doesn't even have a name. Huh. What is Mr. Quill's age? So let's pinpoint his age throughout both of his appearances. It is never stated what age he is, and since we barely have anything to work with, let's just use the actor's real age. So we're going to find out his age in 1988 and 2014. 
Greg Henry is 70 years old, which will make him 62 in 2014. But of course, the character he is playing is 26 years older than he is, which makes Quill 62 in 1988, and adding 26 will make him 88 in 2014. Add another 8 and we'll get his age in 2022. He is 96. He is in his deathbed now, presumably. Of course, this is not counting the blip, because we don't know whether he is blipped or not. But if he had been, he would still be 91 years old as of now, which is still very old. Anyway, to wrap this video up, here's a trivia about Mr. Quill for you all to cry over. James Gunn has revealed that the film originally ended with Peter Quill's grandfather looking up to the stars after seeing a photograph of a young Meredith and Peter. And I quote, He has this photograph of Meredith and Peter as a little boy. And he looks up at the stars, and we go up to the stars, and it was really sweet. It means that he must have seen Quill getting abducted at the end of the day, and is still waiting for him to return. But it was freaking sad, so we took it out. Anyway, that's all I have to say. You know, that's the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. And click your notification bell to be notified every time I post a new one. Thanks for watching.